Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, we're taking a look at all the paints I've currently got inked up that aren't included in my current daily rotation. Just gonna take a quick look at each of them, then move on. The idea is we'll see which ones are still right and which ones can I then get cleaned out. So the first pen, this is the Jin Hao 80. There we go, very reminiscent, isn't it, of a Lamby 2000. The pens are coming out in price order, so this is the cheapest pen. Lamy style nib, this is a fine nib, this is the nib that came with it. And we've got a converter in there. So we've got here a Jin Hao 80, which weren't right. So I'll just give it a couple of scribbles. Nope, not getting anything over there on my scrap paper. Prime the feed, just giving it the best chance. So let's see what we get here. So yeah, we're now getting a little bit of Jin Hao 80 with a fine nib. The ink in here is by Robert Hoster. And it's Fire Engine Red. And the price for this, you're looking at five Aussie dollars, cheap as chips. Given that I've just virtually pushed that all the way down, what I'm going to do is put this in the to clean mug. There it goes, bang into that mug. Up next, staying with a Jin Hao pen, we've got a Jin Hao X450. Metal pen, fairly weighty pen, you really know you've got this in your hand. Nice size pen, just look at that, it fits really well in the hands, nice and comfortable. The section, it's got a little bit of a cut out there, so if you hold your pens there more in the middle of the section, this is perfect for you. Because I hold my pens down near the bottom of the section, I do find that feels quite uncomfortable. Another one, not a lot of ink in here. I think this one may also not write. Let's give it a try then, shall we? So we've got here. Yeah, another one won't write. Try and prime that feed again. I know you get to see my lovely hairy arm. That's all the way down. Let's see what we get. No, nah, nothing on the strap paper. So the second pen, also going to be cleaned out. Not, not doing very well, am I today? Staying with Jin Hao, we've got a Jin Hao 159. So this is the older 159 model. So this is one where it's a metal body. The cap on screws, short section, fat section, quite comfortable to use this. Number six size steel nib. And again, not a lot of ink in here. I'm thinking this might be another one. In fact, it will be another one. That's going to be going out to be cleaned. So we've got something though. Look, look at that. We're getting some writing. Yay. Jin Hao 159 with a medium nib. The ink is by Noodlers. Don't know if you can hear that on the mic, very loud feedback. And it's Navajo turquoise. And the price for this pen, $9. Again, fairly inexpensive pen. Beautiful writer. I've got a number of these 159s. Very nice, but no ink left in it. Goes into the clean pot. Staying with that 159 type we're going for the X159 this time. This is dark blue. Very, very similar. Let me just get the other one out of the clean pot. Very similar body shape, very similar size. This is made of plastic, so it's a lot lighter. The other big difference is the nib. On here, we've got a number eight size steel nib. This one is a fine. And opening it up, uh, we've got a converter. We've actually got some ink in this one. Yes, but will it write? Yes, it does. Jin Hao X159 with a fine nib. The ink is actually the same. It's Noodler's Navajo Turquoise. And then the price for this pen is 
12 Aussie dollars. One thing I find quite interesting, same ink, but just look at the difference in colours. From that medium nib on the 159 looks an awful lot darker, doesn't it? So that was the Jin Hao X159. We're staying with Jin Hao. A load of Jin Hao's today, haven't we? This is the Jin Hao X850. This is in black. Nice, classic looking pen. Quite stylish looking as well. Again, the cap screws off. Back to them number six size nibs. There we go, Jin Hao nib. And that unscrews. There we've got the converter. Let's put that back together. This is a nice fit in the hand. Again, it's got that cutout for the like a finger guide. I find it's a pin in the butt, but that's just my personal use case. So we've got here a Jin Hao. X850. This has got a, just checking, a medium nib. Now the ink, although it looks the same, isn't. It's by a company called Ancient Song. And it's called, what? it's a shimmer ink. It's called Song of the White-Headed. White-Headed. <laughs> I know, quite a long name, isn't it? Price for this pen. Again, we're looking at 12 Aussie dollars. Not sure though, I don't think we're getting a lot of shimmer coming through. Oh yeah, maybe if I hold up, you can start seeing, getting some red sheening coming through on there. Maybe it's a sheening rather than a shimmer. Got myself convinced it was a shimmer. I might be wrong though. So that's the Jin Hao X850. And guess what? We've got another Jin Hao pen. This time, the Jin Hao 9019. Another large pen, another very girthy pen, another number eight size nib. This time it's a medium nib. I like the transparent niche here. Different style of converter on this as well. Let's pop that back together. So we've got here a Jin Hao 9019 with a medium nib. And the ink by Noodlers. And it's Navajo Turquoise. The price for this pen, 12 Aussie dollars. Again, very nice, very comfortable to use this because of that width. It's plastic, so it is fairly light, so there's not a lot of weight in it. So that's the Jin Hao 9019. We're staying with Jin Hao. This time, this is the Jin Hao 100 Centennial. This is in the like a white marbly colour. I've got a number of Jin Hao 100s. I really, really like them. Screw off the cap. This is not a Jin Hao nib though. This is a Goulet nib. It's actually made from the by Yoho. And this is a broad nib. So it's one where I've been playing around by swapping nibs. A little bit of ink left in here, so not a lot. So, do you know what? I'm going to put this out to clean as well. Let me just pop the body back on. We've got here a Jin Hao. So that's not writing. Again, you get to see my lovely arm. Just going to prime the feed. So we've got here a... One more time. Yeah, there it goes. Jin Hao 100 with a broad nib. The ink in here is by Robert Oster. And it's called Honey Bee. The price for this pen, we're starting to go up in price now. 19 Aussie dollars. That's for the pen. You need to add on another 15 Aussie dollars though for the nib because I've swapped the nib. I do like this ink, it's got quite a lot of shading in there. This is the last of a sample that I had of this. So that's the Jin Hao 100 into the cleaning pot. What have we got next? Well, next, we've got a Jin Hao pen. Wow, I hear you all shout, another Jin Hao. This is the Jin Hao 9056. This is a wooden pen. It's um, green sandal wood is the name of the color. Very nice. Again, very similar to the 159, nice sizable pen. 
nice section, nice comfy section. The nib, not a Jinhao nib, I've swapped it out. This is a cursive italic pen by an Indian company called Kiwi Pens. Gives a slightly unusual line again. Looks like there's not a lot of ink in there. Let me just try it on my scrap paper. Yeah, it does write there. Another one, there's not a lot of ink in. Do you know where it's going to go? It's going to go in that clean out pot. So we've got here a Jinhao 9056. I love the line I get from this, this natural line variation. The ink that we've got in here is by Diamine. And it's Wild Strawberry. The price for this pen is, just check in, 20 Aussie dollars. Plus, it was about $10 for that nib. It's a pen I don't use often enough. I do worry with this that the nib will dry out, but it's been sat in my case for about a month without being used and not dried out, so maybe I worry too much about that. So that's a Jinhao 9056 into the cleaning pot. Up next, we're going to change pen manufacturers. Yay! We're going to jump to Japan for a Pilot. This is the Pilot Metropolitan. I believe it's the MR3 model or the Retro Pop. I love this little bit of patterning. just breaks it up a little bit, doesn't it? Cap pulls off. Very thin section. Pen doesn't really need to be posted. You can post it. I use it unposted. So the section quite thin. I find it can be quite uncomfortable for longer sessions. And then we've got a Con 40 in there with loads of ink. Another one with plenty of ink. So we've got here a Pilot Metropolitan. This was the first pen that I got when I got back into fountain pens. It's got a fine nib on it. The ink is by Lamy, part of the Crystal series, and it's called Ruby. This nib really does not show off the ink properties, really is very, very fine. The price for the pen, 39 Aussie dollars. Again, it's another one of those pens. It's too thin a line for me. I very rarely use it, but as we see, I do occasionally ink it up. That's why it's got ink in at the moment. So that's a Pilot Metropolitan. Next up, we've got a Kaveco. So we've got a German pen. Again, not a lot of ink left in this, but enough that I'll actually maybe hopefully be able to get a day out of it. So I'm not going to take this one and put it in the clean out pot. This is the Kaveco Sport. This is in the transparent coconut. And as you can see, I've eyedropped this. You can buy a little teeny weeny converter, but personally, I tried experimenting with eyedropper in it, and I'm really enjoying that. It's a pocket pen. You need to use it posted. Posted, beautiful size. A bit on the light side. The nib there, this is a Kaveco nib. Small looking nib. Don't let that fool you. Performs really, really well. So we've got here a Kaveco Spot. With a 1.1 nib. The ink in here is by Pen BBS, and it's number 276, which is Chengdu City Red. Price for this pen is 41 Aussie dollars. I do love Makaveka Sports. I've got a couple of them. I just think as a pocket pen, you can just throw it in your pocket. It's plastic, it go anywhere really. I haven't had any issues with leakage or anything like that. And it's consistent. I always find that I take it out, take the cap off, and it just writes. So that's the Kaveco Sport. Next up from Asvine. Just let me move this page up a bit. This is the P20. So this is a piston filling pen. Just agitating this because I've got a Starbright ink in here. Again, it's another one. Not a lot of ink in here. Not going to clean it out though because there's enough in there for maybe a day or two. Beautiful colouring, isn't it? Just look at this. Very reminiscent of a Marjon M800 or the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande. 
So we've got a as fine. P20 with a medium nib. The ink, my diamine, and it's glacier. This is the Increment ink, which is the star bright. Price for this pen, 44 Aussie dollars. So it's piston filler, and you do have a little piston window there, which is nice to have. So that's the Asvine P20. Up next, from Canrite, we've got the Canrite Heritage. This is the ebony version, or the black version. This is an Indian pen. Again, this is a piston filler. Again, a little bit of ink in there. Too much to really clean it out, but not enough to really worry about it overly. So this is another pen. Hopefully will get used up during April, because April is going to be a use-me-up month. So we've got here a Canrite. A Heritage. And this has got... A broad nib. There's a broad nib. I love the fact that it's, well, I want to say black, but it's more like a dark grey to go with the body. Looks really nice. A bit like a stealth pen, isn't it? The ink in here is by Ferris Wheel Press. I'm just going to put FWP and it's buttered popcorn. First time I've used this ink and really actually quite like it. Price for this pen is 48 Aussie dollars. I do have a couple of heritage models. The ebony version, this black version, does cost about six dollars more than the others. So that's also worth noting. So that's the Canrite Heritage. Up next, Taiwan for a Twisby, the Twisby Eco. Although it's a very simplistic pen, you know, it's a tube with a nib on it. It's still one of my favourite pens. I love using this pen. I generally always have an Eco inked up, and I've got three Ecos at the moment. I just think they're so nice. So very, very simplistic, very functional. to do what they say on the tin. This is a demonstrator. It's also a piston fuller. You can even see the piston mechanism here, which is one of the things I like. On here, we have a 1.1 stub nib. So we've got a Twisby Eco. To be eco with a 1.1 stub nib. In my recent uh, fountain pen competition that I've been doing the tournament, this came out as being the winning pen as voted for by my viewers. The ink in here is by Diamine and it's Black Ivy. The price for this pen is 59 Aussie dollars. I have noticed the prices of the Ecos have gone up quite considerably over the past few years. I think when I bought this, it was about $35. I'd still quite happily pay the 60 there. I think for what you get, it's a really nice, good value pen. And next pen, we're going to go back to China. And we've got the Marjon or the Moonman M800. There we go. It's the M800 for you. This is the green version. Beautiful colouring pen. Love the way this pen looks. On here, I've also changed the nib. I've got another Goulet nib on here, so it's got a broad nib. There was nothing wrong with the nibs that came with it. My only quibble were they were only fine nibs. I like the more like a broad nib at the moment. So that's why we changed that. There we've got the converter. So we've got here a... Marjon. Now, this is one of the things I've found with this. The nib dries up very quickly. What I've done is I've just shaken it a few times, and now it writes. So we've got a Marjon. Once it writes, it's beautiful. It's just getting it going after it's not being used for a little while. Marjon M800 with that broad Goulet nib. The ink in here is by Robert Oster. And it's called Ride Green. I've been using a lot of this ink lately. I've had it in a couple of my other pens. Really nice. Quite like it. Nice, beautiful green colour, isn't it? And price for this pen, 
66 Aussie dollars. So that's the Marjon M800. The final pen under 100 Aussie dollars. I do have some over 100 Aussie, but the final one under 100 is the Monteverde Ritmer. This is in the olive green. Metal pen, very, very heavy pen. Magnetic cap, which also will go on the other end if you want to post it. I do find posted it's really unwieldy. Unposted it's very nice. Converter, there's a converter in there. Game fair, well, not a lot of ink in there. This is a consistent theme with a lot of my pens at the moment. So, as I say, April's going to be used me up. Hopefully, I'll get through a load of pens. Do you like the black nib on this? It looks quite nice. Steel nibbed. So, we've got a Monteverde Ritmer. Gorgeous writer, really generous line on this. The ink is by Robert Oster. And it's called Moss. Price for this pen just scrapes in 92 Aussie dollars. So they're my pens under $100. Let's take a look at the ones over $100 now. Just dropping in to interrupt your regular programming. Would you like to help support the channel? If so, please consider joining as a member. As a member, you'll get early access to my videos. I normally upload them a couple of days before they go out, and as soon as they're uploaded, they'll be released to members. There'll also be a shout out at the end of the videos, and then as we get the members coming in, we'll actually chat among ourselves and work out what other perks, what other things you'd like me to add in. You know, would you like maybe a monthly live chat just for members? all down to us. So please, if you can, consider joining the channel. A link will be in the description down below. So the first pen over 100 comes from Twisby. This is the Twisby Draco. So this was a limited edition Twisby pen. Limited, I think it's like 5,000 worldwide. So I wouldn't actually say it's limited, but they, got, they said it was. Beautiful colouring on this. Very pretty pen to look at. It's a piston filler, so that this is the piston knob up here. I do find the ink window next to unusable. So you've got an ink window, but only a small portion of that is actually got ink in it. The rest of it's empty. So to me, very little use. Teeny tiny nib. This is one of the things that puts me off this pen. The nib just looks so out of proportion with the rest of the pen, which is a shame because it does spoil it in my mind. So here we've got a Twisby Eco. No, we haven't. We've got a Twisby Draco. The nibs are broad. It's a steel bit. It's a steel nib. The ink is by Diamine. And it's Red Dragon. I do tend to use this combo quite a lot. I just think Dragon and Draco both go together, don't they? 215 Aussie dollars. Certainly, it's not cheap. Was it worthwhile? I think it was overpriced. Still glad I've got it. I still enjoy using it. Just, I think, a bit on the overpriced mark. Next up, we're going to take a big jump. In fact, most of the pens were going to be taking a big jump. Next up, we've got the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande. This is in dark Hawaii. This is the first version of it. So this is still got that older style section. I do prefer this section to the new one they're doing. I just find because I hold my pens down low, this is very, very comfortable. Piston filling pen. I do miss having an ink window, but you can't have everything, can you? Steel nib again, made for them by Yoho. So this is the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande with a medium nib and the ink by Diamine, Jack Frost. So there is a teeny little bit of red sheen. I do struggle to see sheen with this ink. Even on paper like this, this is rodeo paper. Price-wise, 377 Aussie dollars. Said there is a price jump. Let's see, can we see any of that red sheen coming through? Can on Leonardo, yeah, I can see it starting to come through. Hopefully that's getting captured. 
Oh, there we go. Let me try and get actually in the camera for you. Hopefully you can start to see some of that red sheen there. I do find it very difficult to see though, I will be honest. Our next pen is from France and it's the Waterman Karen. Beautiful pen. This is marine amber. I love this colour. There is a green version which is a lot more money and very hard to get now. I'd love to get that eventually. The nib on here is our first gold nib of the day. It's an 18 karat gold nib. There we go and it's an inlaid nib. On here we've got a converter. Gorgeous pen, so nice to use. Section a little bit, yeah I would say it's a little bit on the narrow side but you do get used to it. So this is the Waterman. Notice there that does happen quite often we get a little bit of a hard start. Waterman Karen. This is a medium and as I say it's 18 karat gold. The ink in here by Diamine and it's Oxblood. Nice, really like this. Price wise, 430 Aussie dollars. Jump in price again, lot of money for a pen. You know, there's two more pens to come, both more expensive than this. That's a lot of money for a pen. But when you think about the pleasure it brings you, you know, is it worth it? I personally think it is. But it depends on your circumstances, doesn't it? Up next, we're going to Japan again. We've got another Pilot. This time it's a Pilot Custom 823. This is a vacuum filler. You can see there that hopefully the ink is sloshing around inside. Really nice to see. 14 karat gold, number 15 size Pilot nib, which is roughly the same as a number 6 size Yoho nib. Piston filler, I say, you can see there. I've got this open, it's got a shut off valve. I leave it open when I'm at home. So we've got here a Pilot Custom 823 Broad 18 karat gold. The ink by Dye Mine and it's Tobacco Sunburst. Tobacco Sunburst. Just about fit that in. Price wise, again, taking a jump. 521 Aussie dollars. A lot of money for a pen. I love writing with this pen. Beautiful writer, beautiful pen. So that's a Pilot Custom 823. Our last pen, therefore the most expensive pen, also my newest pen. This is the Visconti Homo Sapiens Dark Age. Made from lava from Mount Etna. That Visconti then mixed with resin to give this. And it's slightly porous, it's hydroscopic, so it repels water. Very heavy pen, you really know you've got this in your hand. It's got the hook safe mechanism to take the cap off. So it's literally just a little teeny turn and then it's off. The nib. This is the Visconti 18 karat gold dream touch nib. This is a broad nib. Oh, beautiful to write with. This is a vacuum filler or a power vac filler. Obviously not going to work it. There is no ink window, so that's one thing. I knew that when I was buying it. You know, I can live with that. I would have just liked to have seen an ink window. You can get the dark crystal, I think it is, which does have an ink window. I just didn't think it looked as nice. But this, this is my grail pen. Has been for a long time. So we've got here a Visconti Van Gogh. No, it's not, is it? It's Homo Sapiens. It's a broad... It's 18 carat. It's gold. The ink is by Dye Mine. And it's Earl Grey. Again, when I was deciding what to put in here, I put, actually put it out and we went through a, round, a number of rounds of voting and we came down to Earl Grey. Hold your socks, this is expensive. 1,141 Aussie dollars when I last checked which was a couple of weeks ago. Not a cheap pen. 
it's my grail pen. I get so much pleasure using this pen that, yes, it's worth that sort of money. Although I didn't pay that. I waited. I got it when it was on sale. So it came in at under $1,000. But still, it's an awful lot of money for a pen, isn't it? But just look at the beauty you're getting. So that's the Visconti Homo Sapiens. So they're the pens that are currently inked up. Let's just get them out, have a quick count. So there are five pens that have gone into the cleaning pot. That's going to give me something to do over the next few days. There are a number of pens which are nearly dry anyway, so they'll be getting cleaned out soon. So hopefully when we come back next month, this list will be a little bit shorter. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I like doing these because it's a way for me, as we've seen, to go through, check out all my pens that are inked up and, you know, decide which ones I want to keep inked up because I'm enjoying them, I want to use them, and which ones, yeah, let's just clean them out because I don't intend to use it again for a while. How do you decide when you should be cleaning pens out? I'd love to know. Please drop a comment down below. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.